what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. You know, later on this week, I might do another rant video. <laughs> I just have so much in me to rant about with this team, man. It's ridiculous. I feel like a lot of people are overlooking a lot of obvious and big issues on the team right now that's just staring you in the face in um pose of just just not sounding the same as everybody else i guess um there's just so many issues with this team and i think a lot of it comes down to coaching and i'm not really gonna get into it but i might just do another rant video <laughs> a lot of those are happening on the channel lately with this team but what we're here to talk about today is a couple of updates with the Giants offensive line and uh, somebody's coming off injury as well. So as you all know, we are very, very unlucky with the offensive line right now. Um, Nick Gates went down in week two with a season ending injury. Our best offensive lineman, um, second best, doesn't matter how you look at it, but definitely our most consistent offensive lineman and a really great piece and anchor there on the inside as our center and when he bounced out to the left guard position, which is now cursed because Gates was replaced by Ben Bredesen, somebody that I do really like as a pickup from, for the Giants that they got from the um, Baltimore Ravens. I think he did pretty good. I think that he was good in pass rushing. He just needs to improve in his run blocking. However, Ben Bredesen now has an arm injury. And remember, this is all in lieu of the offseason injury that our original left guard Shane Lemieux had, which was a torn patellar I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but basically a knee injury. So that's three left guards in a row injured for the New York Giants. We're not sure yet how long Ben Bredesen is going to be out, but now I have no idea what they're going to do. We had Billy Price at center for us, and he was so-so at best in my opinion. They could probably bounce him to the left guard position and then start Matt Skura, who we had on our practice squad, also a pickup from the Baltimore Ravens. Or we just signed a guy from the Chiefs practice squad. No, not the Chiefs practice squad. I think it was the Washington practice squad, a guard called Wes. Maybe he starts. We're now going to be out here having practice squad players start for us on the offensive line. But this line has had so many injuries. It's going to be pretty hard for them to come together and for them to work as a unit. Now, this is from Giants Wire. I'm just going to read off the information that they have on it. Uh... Yeah, I'm trying to find, yep, by Dan Benton, this is what it says. It, when it rains, it pours, and when it pours, it floods. That's the exact scenario the Giants have right now. L losing center Nick Gates to a leg injury, guard Shane Lemie to a knee injury, linebacker Blake Martinez for the season over the past two weeks. They also saw Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton go down hurt, joining fellow, Kenny Galladay, fellow receiver Kenny Galladay, who's been bothered by a hip injury. This is all on the heels of several other injuries and retirements of offensive linemen during the summer. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then now the official report from Jordan Renan of ESPN, he says left guard Ben Bredesen suffered a hand injury Sunday versus the Falcons. That could force him to miss time per sources. That explains in part why the Giants signed guard Wes Martin off of Washington practice squad yesterday. It's possible the Giants start their fourth left guard in four games because of injury. And let's not forget now, Somebody that's been having a great game with a different left guard every single game next to him is Andrew Thomas. I mean, I told y'all this guy was going to be fine. I do wholeheartedly believe he could be a franchise left tackle for us. And I 100% think he's shown that in the first three weeks. It's not like he's gone up against, you know, bad defenses with the exception of Atlanta last week. But he's been playing in strenuous situations and he's been showing out and showing real improvement, showing real progress that once again should have been expected from a lot of fans when you consider the injury he was playing through his rookie year and the uh, coaches he had his rookie year in terms of the offensive line. But now Brent Bederson is out and it's like, what are the Giants going to do to address that line position? Remember, we had Matt Pert practicing at guard at one point because there's still a problem at right tackle even though some fans won't like to admit it. We still have a problem at right tackle. Uh, Nate Solder is simply not the answer. And I think it's clear at this point that the Giants don't believe that Matt Pert is the answer. Um, so what we do is we go out and we had a lot of offensive linemen work out. One of them was former first round pick Isaiah Wilson, um, a right tackle drafted by the Tennessee Titans first overall, um, I think it was 29th, not first overall, first round pick. I think it was 29th overall a couple of years ago. 
a guy that came in with a lot of talent, highly rated prospect, but he had a lot of off the field issues that literally led to him being out the league within, a, um, I think it was a year or two years or something like that. But Isaiah Wilson, now he's a tackle. And if we fix that tackle position, um, which the Giants, it looks like they are planning to sign him. And it is, I think, a low risk, high reward move because listen, let's talk about his off the field issues. I think it's very clear that he didn't have the right people in his circles. Uh, the worst he's done, to be honest with you, is his speeding. He was he was in a police chase um, where he was speeding away and he smoked some weed. That is the worst he's done. There's a lot worse that you could have done as an NFL player. We're seeing it right now with Deshaun Watson. Um, you know, we saw it a couple years ago with the uh, the dead body at Janoris Jenkins' house and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot worse you can do. And, and it's very clear in my opinion that he just was a young guy that didn't have the right people in his area. And I still think there's talent there. I'm not going to go ahead now and say that, oh, no, for sure he's going to be a right tackle replacement or anything. But I think it's a low risk, high reward move. In fact, a couple days ago, literally a couple days ago, maybe sometime last week, Isaiah Wilson issued an apology to the entirety of the NFL, the um, Titans and everything for how he felt that he wasn't, you know, acting in the right way, behaving as an NFL player should. Basically, just a general apology to everybody and saying that he hopes he got a second chance. And I was... I literally retweeted saying wherever he goes, I hope that he does get a second chance and they give him a shot and that he takes the ball and run with it this time and that he doesn't make mistakes. And I am kind of glad that the Giants are a team that's given him a shot. I really look at it as a low-risk high reward move. Former first-round pick, you know, somebody that was once again, you know, uh, scouted heavily, somebody that's played with Andrew Thomas before at when he was at right tackle and then Thomas was at left tackle at Georgia. Uh, somebody... A young 6'6", 350 pound tackle, which you don't see every day. It's not walking through your door every day. So there's the size there, there's the raw talent there. I think we just need some of these coaches, Rob Sale, to actually coach them up correctly. And if there's one coach that I have any type of faith in on this uh, team right now, Rob Sale is the only coach I have faith in. Because even with all our injuries, the pass protection has still been really, really good. Now I'm going to read for you guys is from the post by Paul Schwartz. It's a quick rundown of Wilson's history in the NFL and then what Judge had to say about potentially signing him. So Wilson is a product of Brooklyn who played college ball at Georgia and was a 2020 first round pick by the Titans 29th overall. It did not work out. Wilson was supposed to compete for the starting right tackle job but it never happened. He tested positive for COVID-19 and was not activated until October 10th. He was suspended in December for this, uh, violating team rules and then put on the reserve slash not football illness list. He played in one game his rookie year, a week 12 game against the Colts. The f that was the football difficulties. Off the field, he was arrested for driving under the influence in September of, Janu of uh, 2020. In January, he was arrested after leading a police on a high speed chase. Police, once they finally caught up and stopped Wilson, found marijuana in the car. Following his rookie year, Wilson posted on social media that he would not play for the Titans again. He got his wish in mid-March when the Titans traded him to the Dolphins with 7th round picks also changing hands, a sign of how devalued he was. Three days later, he was waived by the Dolphins after reportedly showing up late for his physical and missed two workouts. So like I said, the Giants, they need all the help they can get. It's a guy that's looking for a redemption story, still very young. It's literally low risk high reward. If he works out, then great. We have a potential starting right tackle and a young one at that. If it doesn't work out, okay, fine. It's not like we spent a whole bunch of money on him. We literally signed him to the practice squad. Now, this is what Judge had to say about it. And I got a couple thoughts to give on Judge with, with these quotes that he said. Um, Judge said, I have a lot of trust in the staff we have. I have a lot of trust in the support we have here and a lot of trust in the program we have here to put the people in a position to be successful. I don't think it's a blanket of what someone else has done with someone that has to tie in and how they do and if they are successful with you that last part was kind of confusing i think there's a point in time everybody needs a fresh start if you treat everyone on an individual basis and understand the person and you address them as a person in terms of what's best for that guy to help them get on on the straight and narrow then they have a chance for success i can pretty much deal with anybody as long as they're themselves and they're honest and in this setting right here that they love football if you meet those things yeah i'll be able to deal with you no problem what i have to say to judge about that is that's great that's great because i really do want to give isaiah wilson a chance and i really hope this works out so it's great that you're giving people second chances but where was this with deandre baker 
And I know we're way past the DeAndre Baker thing, but I was one of the guys that for the longest was a DeAndre Baker defender. It's recorded on the channel. It wasn't until I think, you know, they, they said he was caught with a bribes that I was really, really off the DeAndre Baker defending train because I was like, how can you get caught with a bribe? That's really suspicious. But then in the end, he was still proven innocent anyway. We lost what would have been our number two cornerback because Joe Judge did the opposite of what he's doing here with Isaiah Wilson. He didn't give that man a chance. And DeAndre Baker went to the Chiefs. You know, I, I know he got injured. But he still went to another NFL team and he was doing okay. We could have saved money by not signing Adoree Jackson, even though I like Adoree Jackson, he's our best corner so far. But we would have saved money, we would have had a young guy, we would have had a number two corner next to James Bradbury last year. I don't know how much I changed this thing. I'm just saying, bro, wow, where, where was this energy? Where was this energy last year? This is ridiculous. That's, that's all I'm going to say on that. But I do like the signing. Um, it's terrible that us as Giants fans still got to go through a whole bunch of injuries, but we'll see. We'll see if the Giants find the way. That's it for now. Put your thoughts and comments down below. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.